All right, hi everybody, Carol from Segovia Quilts here. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can prepare a sports jersey so that you can include it in a t-shirt quilt. So this is a simple sports jersey that one of my clients has given me to include in her quilt. And I have already prepared this one and all I need to do is cut out my block. But I wanted to show you all the rough cut for the jersey and what I've already done to prepare it to be included into the quilt. So now I have already cut off the sleeves. I've cut off the collar up there and I've separated the front from the back. So this is what we're going to be including. Now if you've never worked with jersey material before, it has holes in it. So you see here, you can see my finger sliding right behind it. Now because of these holes, you cannot include a shirt like this into a t-shirt quilt without any other kind of preparation. Because what will happen is your batting from the inside of the quilt will start poking out through the holes over time. So, and that's not good, and especially if you, let's say the majority of your shirts are a darker color and you use a black batting, then you will definitely be able to see that black batting through a light colored jersey like this. So this is what it normally looks like. You can see my hand straight through it. But I have already prepared this section and you can't see my hand. Look at that. So now here's another part down here. I'm not going to be using this so you can see the difference here between where you can see my hand moving and where you can't see it. So this has already been prepared like I said. So what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to show you how you can do that and then you can include any of your sports jerseys into your t-shirt quilt. So let's go ahead and go over the supplies that you need to prepare a jersey to include into your t-shirt quilt. Alright, so what you're going to need is the jersey, of course, because that's what's going to be in the t-shirt quilt. So any kind of sports jersey here we have a number 22 Rogers jersey. Again, I've already cut off the sleeves, the neck, and the other side of the jersey. This is the only part that we're going to be using. So you'll need that. You'll also need some heat and bond. I have heat and bond ultra hold here. And this is five yards to the package. And this is how it's sold. It's sold in a little plastic package like this. I get mine from Joanne Fabrics, but I'm pretty sure you can also get it at Walmart and maybe even Michaels. So again, this is Heat and Bond Ultra Hold. It's iron-on adhesive, and it's double-sided, and it is permanent, so don't forget that, permanent. Okay, so you'll need that. You'll need some scissors. I like to use my scissors that are specifically for paper because we will be cutting this Heat and Bond. You'll need an iron, and I have my iron here. I have it preset already to, and it's not focusing, but I have it preset to the silk setting, so you don't want it very hot. I don't have my steam on, so make sure yours is not on. And then what you'll also need, and this is the last thing you'll need, other than an ironing board, obviously, is some fabric to put behind the jersey. You're going to need something to put on this side. Now because you're going to be able to see whatever you put back here, you want it to match the fabric. So here I have the back of one of the shirts that my client gave me, and this is the same team, so the colors matched perfectly. So this is the back piece of one of her shirts. There's no logos on it. It was just an extra scrap piece of material. And this is what I'm going to be adhering to the inside of this jersey to keep my batting from coming out and to keep it from being visible. So, the first thing you'll need to do is flip your jersey over because this is the side that we're going to be working with. And all I'm doing is I'm just smoothing it out. You don't want there to be any wrinkles. Now up here, because of this seam, it's going to be a little wonky, I guess you can say, but try your best just to smooth it out as much as you can, and honestly, it'll be all right because I'm going to be cutting this down a little bit more, so I'm probably not going to end up using these outside pieces here. But I'm going to smooth it all out nice and neat, 
and then we're going to get our heat and bond and we're going to figure out how much of it we need. So now when you unroll it, there's going to be kind of like a scratchy side and then there's going to be the paper side. Now the paper side will have the heat and bond logos on it so it'll be very easy to tell which side is which. The paper side is smooth and it's paper and then the adhesive side like I said it's kind of scratchy. You'll definitely be able to tell the difference so don't worry there. So I'm just going to estimate where I need my heat and bond to reach to. So I'm going to go probably about, I don't know, maybe two inches outside of this name section here. There's the seam, so I'm going to go about two inches outside of that, and same thing on the other side. So I'm just going to lay it down here, and just kind of estimate, again, this doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm just going to lay it out nice and smooth. And then you're just going to cut off from where you need. Now your jersey could be different, so I'm not going to give any measurements for what I'm going to cut. But you just want to estimate. Now you definitely want to make sure you have more than you need so that you can cut it down. You don't want to end up having to, you don't want to end up cutting it and realizing that you don't have enough heat and bond. So measure out what you need for your particular jersey. Alright, so I've cut off what I need for my project. And now I'm just going to lay it here over top of the jersey. And you want to be careful to not wrinkle the jersey underneath it. But again, you're just estimating, and I can feel my seams here through the heat and bond. So I'm just making sure that my heat and bond is relatively centered on the logo on the bottom side. All right, so now that that's done, we're going to get the iron. Now let me zoom in so I can show you all the pressing pattern that I use. So now when you're putting any kind of heat to a jersey like this, you need to be very careful with the logo itself. Too much heat and you can ruin the logo on the front side of the jersey. So that's why you want your iron to be set to a very low temperature and you're only going to put the iron on top of the paper side of the heat and bond for a couple of seconds. Now I do four seconds with firm pressure and that seems to work just fine. Now the instructions on the heat and bond will say I believe 10 to 12 seconds. That's way too long for a jersey. You'll end up ruining the logo. It'll melt, it'll discolor, it could actually shift on you. You don't want to end up with that. So now because of that if you just put your iron in one spot and then you barely move it an inch or so you're going to be reheating the same spot over and over again and that's going to eventually get your logo to be way too hot and it could ruin it so this is a pressing pattern that I like to use so I'll start at the top and I'll just go one two three four up now I hope you can see the outline of my iron here now that's perfect. You want to be able to see the outline because that'll tell you where you need to put your iron down next. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put this edge of my iron right next to the imprint here. So down and then one, two, three, four, up. And I'm going to move it down to the next spot. One, two, three, Four. Okay, so now I've pretty much reached the end of my ironing board. So now I'm going to turn my iron so that the point is now facing to the right. And it actually will fit in perfectly in between those spots that we already did. So, and I'm just going to put the very tip of my iron right to the tip right here where the iron didn't touch the first time around. So, one two, three, four. And then I move down to the next empty spot. One, two, three, four. And I can probably get one more in before I run off my ironing board. So, one, two, three, four. And that beeping is my iron. It's a safety mechanism where if it's facing down too long it'll turn off. So, 
<laughs> you can see the spots of our iron of the parts that have already been bonded. So this section here is good. Now there is a little tiny gap right here between this iron press and this iron press. Don't worry about that right now. I'll go back over once I'm done with this section and hit this again. I don't want to hit it again right now because all of this stuff around it will get way too hot. Alright, so we're going to come back to the top and we'll come to the edge right up here and we'll go ahead and put our iron down again. So, one, two, three, four. I'm going to move down. One, two, three, four. Move down again. One, two, three, four. There. So now you can see we have overlapped just a tiny bit here on these ending sections for this press, this press, and this press. Now that's all right. You can feel it. It'll be definitely warm to the touch, but it won't, you know, be burning. All right, so now we're going to finish up this last section here. And to do that, I'm going to turn my iron again so the point is facing to the right. And with my hand, I'm just going to smooth this down before setting my iron down right here. So we'll smooth it down, and you can actually drop the iron, and then start counting. Three, four. Now I started counting at three because I dropped it and slid it back, and that's already going to get my one and two. So you don't want to go way too hot because, again, you don't want to ruin your logo. So now we'll go ahead and hit this part here, and I'm just going to put my iron and slide it and then start counting. So one, two, three, four. And you can tell when it's bonding because it'll be, you know, it won't pop up. Like this section here, you can poke it with your finger and it'll, you know, it's giving. Versus this section, not so much because it has bonded with the shirt or the jersey already. So now we'll go ahead and hit it one more time. One, two, three, four. All right, so now we can come back and hit this little section right in here. Let's see. We can get this little strip right here that we missed between these two presses. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to take this opportunity to hit the edges all around because there is a spot here that's missing and a spot here that's missing. And then I'm going to hit the edges just all the way around real quick. So just one, two, three, four. Up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And yeah, looks like we're missing just a sliver in there. I'm going to come back and hit that once this part cools down a little bit. So I'm going to keep going. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out the best way because I'm missing a little sliver down here too. So we'll try and maximize this one press. One, two, three, four. All right. And then right here. One, two, three, four. Perfect. So now you're going to do this whole pressing pattern throughout however big your jersey logo is. So now mine's rather large, so I'm just going to slide this down. Again, I'm going to smooth it out. Now I'm not, the adhesive hasn't reached, it's not been bonded down here yet because my iron hasn't gotten down here yet. But my logo is right here, so I actually need to add some more heat and bond just to the bottom right here because this heat and bond here is only 17 inches wide. So my logo here I believe is 16 inches and I pushed the heat and bond up about 2 inches above the logo. So I still have, I don't have nearly enough down here so I need to add more, but I have already cut extra strips out because I knew I was going to be short. <laughs> so all I'm going to do, now I am piecing these together, which is fine because you're not going to be able to see this on the completed quilt. So 
So I'm just going to smooth this out right here. And then I'm going actually, we're going to put this side over here. So that'll go there. And you don't want to overlap it because if you, if you put this piece on top of this paper piece, you're not going to be able to get the paper from this piece off from underneath this piece. So don't overlap them. Or if you're going to, finish this whole section first, peel the paper, and then put your next piece on. And that's completely fine if that's the way you want to do it. There's no really right or wrong way to do it. And then I have some more strips here for the ending spot here. So I'll go ahead and I'm just going to slide this down just to make sure it's a nice line. There we go. All right. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my iron right to the edge here and I'm just going to set it right on top. So one, two, three, four. Up. And then this time, because it's so small, instead of doing this, 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 and then turning the iron, I'm just going to go ahead and turn it now because my iron plate is big enough to hit this top and this bottom. So, one, two, three, four. Turn it again. One, two, three, four. We're almost to the end. One, two, three, four. We just have a little sliver left. One, two, three, four. There we go. So then now we just need just this little ending piece and I'm just figuring out which strip will work best. Perfect. So now I'm going to start right over here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And probably one more ought to cover the rest of this. One, two, three, four. Perfect. This extra down here, I can just cut off because I'm not going to have to go this far down or this far out to cut out my logo. So now, we'll pull this back up, and all of this up here has already cooled down, but if it's still too hot for you to work with, you can just pick it up and just give it a little shaky shake. It doesn't have to be anything hard, it's just to get the air moving all around it, cool it off a little bit quicker for you. All right, so mine's good. I can definitely work with it like this. So now you just want to go to one of the corners and then just slowly roll back the paper. And let me zoom in so y'all can see this. And actually, you can see it really good. So I don't even need to zoom in. So this shiny part here, it probably looks, it looks like a white to you all, but this is the adhesive. This is what's getting bonded to your to your jersey. So you just want to pull back the paper. I like to do it all the way around. And then you can just put a hand and then just give it a little pull. You don't have to rip it off or anything. You can do it nice and slow. It'll come right off. Very, very easy. And then we're towards the end. There we go. And you just want to be careful with the edges because sometimes this paper can tear and then you'll end up being stuck with like a little bit of paper on here. It's like a sticker where you start peeling off a sticker and most of it comes off and then you get this little tiny part that gets stuck and you have to sit there and scrape it with your fingernail to try and get it off. So, you just want to be careful. Alright, so now we'll slide it up a little bit. And you can actually see my different iron presses. I'm looking in the camera and you can see the outline of the iron from my different presses. Alright, so now we'll peel off this part. 
There you go. This peels right off. There you go. Okay, and last one. Now this one I'm going to cut before I peel it. Because otherwise, if I don't, then it's going to leave adhesive right here. And I don't need that there. So I'm just going to cut. And this is why I like having my uh, paper scissors. So that I don't have to use my fabric scissors on this, which is, I mean, it's essentially paper. It's got that paper backing. So if you don't mind using your fabric scissors on the heat and bond, then go ahead and do so. But I mind. <laughs> and whoop, there we go. All right. So now we'll just peel off this last little section here. I'm just going to slide my hand inside so I can lift that paper up. There we go. Oh, see? It did what I was talking about. So I'm going to zoom in. There. So it tore right here. And it just, I don't know why. Sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. It's finicky like that. So I'm just going to come up from the bottom and then it'll come off. It's not a big deal. And, whoop. There. All right. So we got that off. Perfect. So now this is what it'll look like. Now you'll probably see there could be some spots that maybe didn't get as good of a bond as other spots. And honestly, that's all right because we're actually going to press it again. So now I'm going to even this out. Again, I'm going to smooth it out. Now, you won't be able to smooth it as easily because the heat and bond, it's, I mean, it's essentially plastic, so your hand will kind of stick to it a little bit. It's not sticky, but when you're trying to smooth it out, your hand will stick to it just a tiny bit. All right, so now this is where you get your fabric that you're going to be putting on the back side of this. So let me go ahead and zoom back out. There we go. All right. So now for this particular fabric, it's the same color on both sides, so it doesn't really matter which side you put on the adhesive, but I like the way the outside of the shirt looks better than the inside of the shirt. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and do it with the pretty side facing down. So the pretty side is essentially what you're going to see through the jersey and I'm just checking the bottom of my jersey here just to make sure I have enough down below. I'm actually going to cut off this collar and shoulder seam just so that I'm able to lay this fabric out a little bit more smoothly. There we go. Alright, so now just lay it out right here and I'm just smoothing it out. Now if your fabric's like super wrinkled, definitely hit it with an iron before you bond it to your jersey. That'll just help it lay a little bit smoother. Alright, so now I've got this all nice and laid out and now we can go ahead and start bonding the jersey and the t-shirt fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and just start in a corner like I did the first time. Now if you have any adhesive, let me show you all, actually you can see it in this one better. If you have any adhesive sticking out from underneath your fabric, be careful because if your iron hits that, the adhesive is going to get stuck to your iron and you definitely don't want that. Now I have a pressing sheet that I can use. If you don't have a pressing sheet, you can just put um, like a piece of t-shirt fabric over top of it. Anything else that you don't mind getting, you know, heat and bond stuck to because it will stick to this. So you can just stick something right over top or you can even get some of the paper that you took off and just stick it right over top and then you can hit it with an iron because the paper will just peel right off from that heat and bond. So actually I'll go ahead and do that. This way you all can see that. So, but I'm going to start in this corner. Good, you can still see. I'm going to start in this corner over here. 
Now there is a little bit of heat and bond sticking out right here. So I'll just go ahead and put this paper right over top of it. And I'm just going to set it back down. One, two, three. check the bottom just to make sure I've got all the good adhesion down below and it looks good to me so now this jersey is ready to be cut out now here's the front and the front looks just like it did before except you can't see through the jersey and that's good you don't want to be able to see through it because then your batting will be able to start poking through and you'll be able to see it it's not good for the quilt so this is ready to be cut out. So let me go ahead and zoom in so you all can see that it's not see-through anymore. And you can actually see the line here from our heat and bond down below. Now it's not, the only reason you guys can see it is because the light is hitting it and it's making it a little bit shiny. Now you will be able to see a little bit of shine through the holes if the light hits the quilt a certain way. But honestly, it's not going to be that noticeable, and it's better to be able to see a little bit of shine through the holes instead of all your batting sticking out. So <laughs> I'll take shine over batting any day. But let me show you all. I'll see if you can see my finger through it. Mm, can't really see it, but you can't see through this part anymore because that t-shirt fabric is now bonded to the back side of this jersey. Now it does make it a little bit stiffer. It's going to be more stiff than any of the other shirts in your t-shirt quilt, but I don't think it's that terribly noticeable. I mean, if you happen to be feeling underneath each and every block, then yes, you will definitely notice it. All right, so our jersey is completely done and it's ready to be cut now. So I'll go ahead and show you all how I do my jerseys. It's exactly the same as how I do my regular t-shirts, but I'll go ahead and show it to you all anyways, just in case someone hasn't seen my other videos. So I'm just lining up my rulers here with the Rogers logo up on top. I'm going to slide this down just to make sure I've got it all in there. All right. So it looks like the logo is 12 and a quarter inches. So I'm going to mark six. We'll go six and an eighth. There we go. There we go. Okay, so that's the middle of my jersey or of my logo. So now I'm lining my rulers up on the top and I'm just putting my ruler line here on my chalk marks. There we go. Alright, so it looks like our logo is 14 and 3 quarters. So we'll go ahead and mark it at seven 
and three eights. There you go. Alright. And now I can figure out where I'm going to cut. So it's too big to do a 12 inch block, so we'll have to bump it up to a 16. Okay. So now I'm putting my measuring lines here on my two chalk marks so I can cut this side. And I'm just making sure my ruler is all the way down to the bottom. I guess it helps if I have my rotary cutter. Alright, so now start at the bottom. And I'm just making sure to put enough pressure on my cutter so I can get through the jersey, the heat and bond, and the t-shirt on the bottom. Alright, so now I'm lining this side up so I can cut the left. There we go. I'm going right over top of a seam, so I need to go through it. Okay, we got it through that last time. All right. Okay, so now we'll cut this way, and it looks like we'll go ahead and do the same size for up and down. So we're going to do a 16 inch block up and down. And I'm just checking my lines here on the side just to make sure everything's nice and square. And actually, because there's a seam, because of this seam right here, I don't like the way it's laying on my ruler. So I'm actually going to bump this up a little bit. Mm, I don't know if I'll have enough to go that way. Let's check the other way. I'm just trying to mess around with my rulers to see if there's any kind of wiggle room that I can mess with to change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump this up to a larger block. Mm, let's see. So it looks like right here, right there. So I'm just going to line this up with the closest measurement that's on my ruler. I'm just checking my edges here. Alright. Set. Okay. So now, because I did not do an even cut, now I'm actually going to line my jersey up with the lines on my mat so that I can get a nice even cut. There we go. Okay. And I actually don't need that little one anymore for this one. So now I'm just going to measure down and I'm going to cut a 20 and a half inch block because 16 and a half won't be big enough. So my next one is a 20 and a half. And that'll take us to two and a half. Actually, let me cut off these. Cut these little guys off here. That's just so I can actually reach the edge of my rulers to the outside so I can actually cut. Alright, so where did it go? Twenty and a half is two and a half. Now I'm just lining my ruler up down here.
that scrap and I've got a little hanger down here. So we'll go ahead and line this up and just cut this little guy off. And I got one on the other side too. There we go. It was only like a half inch that I needed to keep cutting. Oh well. There we go. Perfect. Alright, so now we have our jersey block. So let me zoom in so you all can see the back maybe even some of the holes. There you go. Alright, so that zoomed in very nicely. And you cannot see my hand through the back. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. And the back side just looks like a regular t-shirt. I mean I know it's kind of hard to tell on the camera, but it looks just like a regular t-shirt. And it's all bonded, so you can't scratch it off it's not going to come off. It's all bonded. There you go. So, this is what it'll look like on the back. And again, everything is bonded on here. You're not going to move it. Flip it over. There you go. So now this fabric up here, this will be a little bit loose because it's actually sewn on to another piece of fabric. So this part, there's no adhesive on the back side of this Rogers part, but because it's sewn all the way around, it's fine. It's not going to come off or anything like that. So this is what our jersey is going to look like, and then you'll just sew it into the regular um, pattern for your... So this is what it's going to look like, and you'll just sew this block into your t-shirt quilt as if it was just any other block. So, yeah, now I have two more jerseys that I need to cut out, but I wanted to show you all how to do it, and this is how you can do it. Well, this is how I do it. There's probably a couple of other ways out there where you can do it. This is the way that I prefer. So, let me know what you think. Let me know if you've seen or heard of any other ways that people are able to add jerseys into their quilts. I definitely love to know what people try out there. Like I said, there's probably a ton of different ways to do it. This is just the way that I prefer to do it. All right, so here are the three jerseys that I'm putting in my client's quilt. And I hope you all liked my video. I hope it was pretty understandable. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comment section just down below. Thank you for watching my video today. Make sure to check out my Facebook page where I post pictures of quilts that I've completed for clients. And until next time, I will see you quilters later.